All right, let's um, now let's turn some power on here. Um, GSX with next gen um, F2 fuse is blown. I've metered it, verified the fuse is in fact not good. Um, but we can go ahead and power it up. You can see the LED didn't come on. So F2 fuse is going to control four, five, six pin holders and the spotting tong solenoid. So I think, yeah, that's going to be what we're going to focus on first. All right. So we've got 11.2 or 11 point something ohms yeah. on that the, solenoid the, um, for the spotting tong. The solenoid. All right, let's jump down to the table and let's take a look at the uh, four, five, six pin holder rows. I found it. It didn't take long. We uh, so we ended up doing. We pulled all the pin detecting plates off of uh, seven, ten row and four, five, six row, and then uh, pulled the wire cover off the back. I do this with the table up, I'm laying on my back on the pin deck. Um, for me, it's easier than trying to hunch over. Um, cause I have, you know, back pain issues and stuff, but let's zoom in here. Can you see that? These wires, red and blue here and yellow all got smushed somehow. I don't know, but you can see there's evidence right here where, uh, we had voltage to ground. So that's going to be our short, but. We're not going to give up there. We're going to keep looking. Because if we look over here, a while ago, we had an issue here uh, where we had to patch a couple breaks in the wires too. Um, not a huge deal. It's fixable. We don't need to change the entire harness out. So this is good. This should make things a whole lot easier. All right. So I'm going to go fetch some stuff and we're gonna patch this wiring up all right you guys are stuck to the bottom of the table um, probably the best view that I can get for you guys um, what we're gonna do we're gonna chop at each one of these pinch spots just off to one side I'm basically gonna chop out the damaged section and then uh, I like to use uh, these uh, like heat shrink tubing that's filled with like a solder ring in the middle and heat it up and you flow some solder between uh, the ends and it solders it and it shrink wraps it and holds everything nice and tight. Um, we may or may not need to pull some additional slack from the wiring bundle. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. No, we can do it, but it's just a matter of Cutting a couple zip ties and pulling a little bit of extra slack through if we have to. No biggie. Yeah, this will reach. All this stuff will reach just fine. Good, 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 good. All right, so. so I like to use a uh, propane torch. These things are great. Um, especially if you are in an area where you don't have extension cord capabilities or anything like that fits in your pocket easy peasy ready to go no uh, extension cords no excessive warm-up time so I've got a hot air tip on that uh, soldering iron already it's lit. It's ready to go. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to extend, here, focus, the wires. Hold on. There we go. 
Now it shouldn't shift focus on you guys. Yeah, I don't do a lot of editing. This is just raw video. I don't have time for editing. <laughs> Too freaking busy. So we're going to heat shrink. I like to heat shrink the ends first so the wire can't back out while you're doing this. Alright, then we're going to aim for the middle where the solder stripe is. We need to get this hot enough to flow that solder out so we fuse this connection. <coughs> it may take a minute or two. This is not a uh, high powered hot air tip. It looks like it went. Looks like we have liquid solder in there. Good. Grab another one. And we'll do it again. Let's do red wires. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ow. Mm, hot plastic. It's going to be warm for a few minutes. Okay. Again. Like shampoo. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Mm. Whiskers sticking out there. Mm. Move through the matrix again. I caught that with my mouth. Okay. Wires are in. Hot air gun. Shrink the ends. Make sure nothing come back out. Then work the middle. dead air. Alright, I just saw solder flow through there, so we're good on that. Alright. Next step. Blue wire. A little toasty. If you twist the wires, you'll get little whiskers sticking out. Helpful tips by Mike. Do do. -do. <laughs> All right, blue wires coming in. Okay. I'm gonna hold that one because it wants to shift, and I don't want it to. Shrinky dinks are working, they're magic. Solder just flowed out of the band. We're good. All right. Turn off my torch. See if we can get our wires situated a little bit better here. Um, this begs to ask the question of why do these wires get pinched? If the cable management is good, these wires should not be exposed to a pinch point. So what I did notice while I was taking this stuff apart, I didn't get it on camera. Um, but there were uh, two of these um, 
pin holders that were missing the pivot pins. Um, they only had one pivot pin holding everything in place. Uh, let me zoom you guys out in here. Let's get resituated. I'll show you a little bit better. So we're looking up at the number four pin. Um, but there's a pivot pin that goes in each side of the pin detector plates. Well, if that pin is backed out, this thing's going to sit crooked. Um, and that could have caused the wire pinch. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I just started taking everything apart. Uh, I was super eager just to get to the wiring and uh, figure out what was going on with that. So, let me stop wiggling you guys around, make you seasick. We're going to button everything up. We're going to turn everything on and we're going to retest. Definitely an interesting clue right here. You guys are looking through the... Uh, cut out for the number 10 spot but the uh, wire routing and cable management here is uh, come loose um, and there is a crush mark right there where it uh, looks like it ran into the uh, the tower guide rollers so we're gonna have to lower the table down and get that cable routed back over this and snap back into place but before we do that, we have a pile of pin detecting plates that need to go back in. Um, also, we're going to replace all the missing pivot pins, too, because there were at least two that were missing. Yeah, it's kind of a little dark in here, but this cable um, <laughs> got a little smushed. We need to uh, make sure that that's properly secured as well. Right like that, because that went up into those rollers, and uh, now it's got a smoosh spot in it. Hopefully, it won't be a problem. Okay, this is good. All of our fuses have lights on them now. Um, I'm in 10 pin, so we're going to go ahead and turn it on. We're going to watch it function. What are we waiting for? We aired out on something. Error code 75. Oh, that's cute. And so the plot thickens. So error code 75 is G switch not found. I took a peek in there. Um, the G switch is closed. So we're going to meter um, the plug body down here. All right. So we've got our little adapter going on in here. I'm going to go ohms, hit select for beep, works. Our G switch is closed right now, so the, it works. Our switch is good. So now we have to look at our line, our cabling from here over to the next gen box just off to my left. Yeah, this is a weird one. It's got continuity through the wire, but I can't meter a closed switch through the circuit, so... I'm fumbling through this real quick. Yeah. So I found the issue. The, um, the Molex pin in this socket is garbage. You can see how it's all spread open. That's why we're losing continuity through that G-switch circuit, so... Hang on, we'll be back with the Molex pinning kit, and the saga will continue.
the same. Yeah, I think that worked. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> the struggle is real. Um, these are uh, off-brand uh, extractors. Hang on. Hmm. We may have actually bent the uh, pin, shoved it back in shape enough that it can actually work. Yeah, we may have reformed the pin. Hold on, maybe. Maybe I spoke too soon. No, I did the wrong pin. Mm. I got to uh, talking and not working. Do over. Cut. No. We'll do it live. This might work. It might not work. I'm optimistic. Maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does that look like it might work? I can get the extractor if I can get the extractor over it it's close it's very close a little more a little bit more I wish that I had my super tiny double zero micro, hey, there we go, screwdriver kit. I don't. But I think that we have great success here. Good. Let's plug it in and we'll test the cable uh, in circuit. Okay. Attempt number two. We're going to be looking from this pin. I don't remember what pin number it is. To this pin. We have continuity. We have a beep. We did not have that before. So this should be good. Now our next gen box is going to get that G switch signal. Okay, we're back up at the next gen box. We're going to hit 10 pin into run. Pick the sweep up. Good, no error. Hit reset. Sweep drops. Cable runs indicating G switch has been met. Let's take a peek down here. Bear with me, please. Down below. And look at that, we got a full set of 10 pins, so we know the pin holder solenoids are working and the grippers are opening. We have no errors, we have no blown fuses. This is good. I think we're done. Yeah, this one was uh, a bit of a surprise, huh? Kind of got a two for one electrical issue. Anyways, we're all done. Thanks for watching.